Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we dive into Mind Reader by David J. Lieberman, a pivotal guide that illuminates the art of understanding and interpreting the hidden communications of those around us. Published in 2022, this book offers invaluable insights from Lieberman's extensive experience as an FBI instructor and lie detection expert. He meticulously explains how to decode situational subtext, scrutinize language for underlying meanings, and assess the honesty of those we interact with, providing readers with the tools to navigate the complexities of human behavior confidently. David J. Lieberman, a renowned psychotherapist, has not only penned several New York Times bestsellers, but also imparted his wisdom to elite agencies such as the CIA, FBI, and NSA in addition to advising government negotiators and Fortune 100 executives. His expertise makes Mind Reader an essential read for anyone looking to sharpen their interpersonal skills. Who stands to gain from Mind Reader? If you've ever been perplexed by mixed signals at work or in your personal life, struggled to understand the intentions of others, or sought to enhance your negotiation tactics, then this book is tailored for you. Join us as we uncover the secrets to reading and understanding people, a skill that can transform your interactions and elevate your perception of the world around you. Mind Reader. Find out what people really think, what they really want, and who they really are. Introduction. Unveiling the complexity of difficult people. Have you ever wondered why certain individuals seem perpetually challenging to deal with? Psychotherapist and author David J. Lieberman has dedicated a significant portion of his work to decipher the enigma that is human behavior, particularly the traits that make people difficult. In his book, Mind Reader, Lieberman embarks on a mission to equip us with the tools not only to identify deceit, but to understand the deeper emotional undercurrents driving challenging behaviors. While avoiding eye contact might signal deception to many, Lieberman points out that more complex behaviors, such as dishonesty, arrogance, or invasive actions, often root in something far more profound than mere intent to deceive. Through his lens, the captivating narrative of Mind Reader explores how ego and self-esteem shape our actions, sometimes driving us to behave in ways that deviate from our better selves. But how can we differentiate between genuine confidence and the facade created by low self-esteem? Lieberman offers a guide to recognizing the subtle, often overlooked signals that hint at an underlying struggle with self-worth. This skill, as Lieberman reveals, is crucial not only for understanding the origins of difficult behavior, but for reshaping our reactions to it. By delving into the intricacies of ego and low self-esteem, Mind Reader presents a compelling argument. The individuals who challenge us the most are often wrestling with their internal conflicts. Recognizing this hidden turmoil allows us to approach them with empathy rather than irritation or anger. Through the journey into human behavior Mind Reader offers, we are invited to see beyond the surface level of difficult actions and look into the heart of what really drives people. This insightful exploration not only enhances our ability to spot deception, but enriches our understanding of human nature, opening the door to more compassionate interactions with those around us. Part 1. How Anxiety Shifts Our Focus inward. To navigate the intricate maze of human interaction, we often find the best compass is to look within ourselves. Consider for a moment the effortless state of being in the zone. Whether that's while engrossed in a jogging session or behind the steering wheel, maneuvering with unthinking precision, your actions flow seamlessly from alternating between brake and gas to switching lanes without a second thought. Now, contrast that with the trepidation of carrying a steaming mug of coffee filled to the brim across a room. Suddenly, the fluidity of your movements gives way to a tense focus on the potential disaster cupped in your hands. 
This shift is attributed to anxiety. Your ego panics at the thought of spilling the coffee and, consequentially, you becoming its victim. Under the spotlight of anxiety, your focus narrows dramatically to yourself. This phenomenon isn't limited to physical tasks. Driving in a blizzard or attempting to keep up with the flow of a sophisticated social gathering can trigger a similar effect. Activities that your body and mind typically manage with little conscious effort suddenly demand your full attention. In these heightened states of psychological tension, your actions become deliberate and your perspective shrinks to encompass only yourself. Anxiety acts as a spotlight, centering our awareness intensely on our actions and thoughts, inhibiting our capacity to engage fully with our surroundings. Have you ever experienced a mental blank in the middle of an exam or found your skills abandon you during a critical moment? That's anxiety taking center stage, overactivating your consciousness and disorienting your cognitive functions. Verbal expressions of anxiety frequently manifest through qualifiers like I think or I guess, diluting the assertiveness of our statements and betraying our inner uncertainty. While these instances illustrate situational anxiety, they also give us clues about the underlying presence of low self-esteem. Persistent feelings of stress and fear often signal a deeper issue of self-worth. As we delve further into the topic of low self-esteem, it's crucial to remember, the higher the psychological stakes, the more constricted our worldview becomes, all thanks to anxiety pushing our focus inward. Part 2. Decoding the Signs of Low Self-Esteem At the heart of every joy-filled interaction lies the cornerstone of emotionally healthy relationships, necessitating a degree of ego deflation from us. It's this vulnerability, the act of making room in our lives for others, that allows for deep connections to blossom. Yet, not everyone finds this easy. For those consumed by fear or driven by an inflated ego, their own troubles take up so much space that little is left for love and connection. This, often, is a clear indicator of low self-esteem, mirroring a deeper, unresolved emotional turmoil. Low self-esteem, much like physical pain, commands our attention and turns it inward, making empathy and generosity scarce resources. This inward focus can manifest as arrogance, a penchant for self-pity or a noticeable lack of empathy. Recognizing someone struggling with this toxic form of low self-esteem involves observing certain behaviors and patterns. Notice their relationship dynamics. Are they a perpetual people-pleaser or stubbornly unyielding, unable to acknowledge their faults? Assess the quality of their interpersonal relationships. Do they boast a supportive circle of friends and a healthy family connection? Or do they seem isolated, often mired in conflict without acknowledging their role in it? Individuals grappling with low self-esteem tend to prioritize their needs and desires above others, only extending generosity when it serves their need for validation. Conversely, those with healthy self-esteem balance self-care with genuine altruistic concern for others. Other telltale signs include disrespectful behavior toward service staff, a disregard for the boundaries of ownership and personal space, and emotional neediness or manipulative tendencies. Breaching social etiquettes by asking intrusive questions or being unable to accept rejection further marks a preoccupation with self, overshadowing the ability to gauge and respect others' feelings. However, it's crucial to remember that these behaviors don't inherently render someone bad. More often than not, they are unconscious expressions of deep-seated emotional pain rather than deliberate acts of manipulation. Moreover, understanding that self-esteem and confidence are distinct concepts is vital. While confidence relates to our faith in handling specific situations, self-esteem reflects our intrinsic self-worth and love. One can be a master in a particular domain and still suffer from low self-esteem, particularly if one's identity overly relies on comparison with others for validation. As we venture into the realm of emotional resilience, it's essential to carry forward the understanding that the journey towards healing and self-love extends far beyond mere confidence, deep into the essence of how we perceive and value ourselves.
Part 3. Building the Pillars of Emotional Resilience Emotional resilience, the unsung hero of mental wellness, bestows upon us the capacity to weather life's storms without succumbing to despair. At its core, emotional resilience is underpinned by robust self-esteem, distinguishing those who crumble under adversity from those who emerge unbowed. The ego, with its insatiable curiosity for the unknown, often serves as both a catalyst for and an obstacle to resilience. It hungers for explanations to life's perplexing questions. Why a call went unreturned, or a job opportunity slipped through the fingers. Yet, resilience thrives on acknowledging the limits of our control and understanding, especially when answers are elusive or when outcomes defy preparation. The choice between resilience and ego-driven responses like anger, self-pity, or a sense of personal affront is telling of our ability to navigate life's inevitable ups and downs. An egocentric view leads to a distorted belief that life's disappointments are personal indictments of our worth, fueling a cycle of blame and despondency. True resilience is cultivated by facing rather than fleeing from challenging emotions. Yet modern conveniences offer myriad escapes from discomfort, whether through endless social media scrolling or marathoning TV shows, leaving little room for genuine emotional growth. Referencing terror management theory, the author elucidates two divergent approaches to coping with anxiety. Individuals leading content, value-driven lives manage their anxieties by aligning closely with their core beliefs and principles. Conversely, those less satisfied with their lives often resort to forms of escapism, such as indulgence in food, sex, or entertainment, inadvertently exacerbating their anxieties. Resilience, then, boils down to our handling of anxiety and stress. Do we confront and adapt, react and unravel, or simply withdraw? Not surprisingly, those who habitually avoid anxiety-inducing situations only reinforce their fears, further undermining their self-esteem over time. Assessing a person's emotional well-being thus hinges on their ability to maintain balance and moderation in their responses to life's challenges. In essence, the measure of one's resilience is not merely how they withstand adversity, but how chill they remain amidst the turbulent waves of life. Part 4. The Ego. Fears Disguise in the Modern World. At the very core of our behavioral patterns lies the ego, a complex entity that often veils itself in the form of an outsized persona. But have you ever paused to ponder the motivation behind the ego's machinations? The root, as it turns out, is fear, particularly the fears swirling around low self-esteem. Individuals grappling with low self-esteem frequently project their internal turmoil onto the external world. In stark contrast, those who enjoy a healthier state of self-regard navigate life with authenticity and an open heart free from judgment. When you encounter someone whose world seems to revolve exclusively around themselves, it's a telling sign of the battles being waged within. Consider anger. On the surface, it appears as a forceful, outward-directed energy. Yet, at its core, anger is nothing but a fear-induced reaction, a desperate grasp at control to deflect from our inner vulnerabilities. Anger transforms the individual into a perpetual victim entrapped by the injustices of the world, perpetually questioning, how could you do this to me? Yet, seldom do anger-driven actions yield positive outcomes. More often, they result in further chaos and discomfort. Visualize the frustratingly frequent occurrence of stubbing your toe in the midst of a rage. The ego, faced with emotional threats, deploys numerous defenses like anger to shield us from facing our own flaws. No one relishes recognizing their own failings or harmful tendencies. It's far easier for the ego to cast blame outwardly or conjure justifications for our actions rather than confront the uncomfortable truths about ourselves. Take smoking as an illustrative point. Despite the universal awareness of its health hazards, many smokers find solace in the ego's arsenal of avoidance, denial, or rationalization. Declarations such as 
I could die tomorrow, or concerns about weight gain post-cessation, serve as convenient barriers against confronting the addiction's grip. At the heart of difficulties in extending apologies or forgiveness lies a similar struggle with low self-esteem. Admitting fault or releasing grievances exposes an individual to vulnerability, a state the ego fiercely protects against to maintain a semblance of strength and security. Conversely, quickness to forgive or apologize signals emotional robustness and a well-adjusted nature. Thus, in understanding the ego as a manifestation of fear, especially the fear born of low self-esteem, we uncover powerful insights into human behavior. Recognition of these dynamics opens the door to greater empathy and, ultimately, to fostering stronger, more genuine connections with ourselves and others. Part 5. Navigating the Narrative of Emotional Health The journey through the labyrinth of human emotions often leaves us pondering the essence of what signifies troubled behavior. A preliminary gauge of emotional health can be seen in how individuals respond to the ebbs and flows of life. Does their reaction scale with calmness or do they amplify the trivial to monumental proportions? Those who lack a balanced perspective, often ensnared by self-centric concerns, perceive every obstacle as a cataclysm. But what truly constitutes a balanced perspective? It hinges on whether our experiences are framed within a contamination narrative or its counterpart, the redemption narrative. The former perceives a chain reaction of negative events stemming from a single misfortune. Envision the disruption a bit of rain brings to a picnic expanding to taint the entire day. This narrative disproportionately magnifies negativity, overshadowing any potential for positive outcomes. Contrastingly, the redemption narrative seeks the silver lining amidst adversity, transforming even the bleakest moments into opportunities for growth or hope. Applying such a framework allows for a constructive reframing of events, such as finding solace in a loved one's peaceful passing. The divergence between these narratives often manifests in the language we use, particularly in the ratio of positive to negative expressions. Observe the individual who consistently hones in on discomforts or flaws upon entering a room. Their worldview is likely saturated in negativity, a reflection of lacking joy in their life. Additionally, the nuances in speech can reveal one's anxiety levels. For instance, the reliance on absolutes, everybody, always, totally, signals a craving for certainty spawned from fear and anxiety, painting the world in stark blacks and whites. In contrast, individuals grounded in calmness portray the world with a palette of nuances. Listen for signs of absolutism, marked by intensified language and sweeping judgments. An absolutist doesn't merely note the need for car repairs. To them, the car is irredeemably totaled. They extend their personal preferences into universal truths, making provocative claims like, everyone loves the beach, escalating to extremes where disagreement is not just wrong but borderline insanity. Recognizing these linguistic cues offers insights into an individual's emotional health shedding light on their self-esteem and quest for happiness. Armed with this understanding, we can navigate the complex emotional landscapes of ourselves and others with greater empathy and awareness. Final Summary Mastering the art of reading people isn't solely about identifying their most visible traits or transient behaviors. The crux lies in recognizing the subtle yet telling indicators of low self-esteem. This includes their propensity to steer conversations towards themselves, basing their identity on a single, often superficial, characteristic, or displaying a quickness to anger accompanied by frequent swearing. However, it's pivotal to approach this analysis with a grain of caution. A single snapshot in time should not define our perception of someone. Human nature is dynamic, and we all traverse through cycles of highs and lows. It's not the sporadic divergence from our usual demeanor, but the consistent patterns of behavior that truly unveil the core of a person's character. By paying close attention to these patterns, we can glean insights into the underlying causes of behavior, particularly those stemming from low self-esteem. 
Understanding these nuances not only enhances our ability to read people, but also fosters a deeper, more empathetic connection with them, allowing us to navigate social interactions with greater nuance and sensitivity. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then. Happy reading and happy listening.